Jerry McGovern, the man who designed this, the latest Range Rover, had a difficult job. He had to update one of the most iconic vehicles ever made. He had to take something that's already the best and make it better for a newer audience. At its unveiling in London, he said the new Range Rover has to be the most capable vehicle in the world, comfortable in the outback or at the opera. And that's precisely what the last generation can do. Hell, it's what it still does every single day. So what does this, the fourth generation, bring to the game? Well, it turns out everything, but also a little bit of nothing. Try getting a noodle around that. Land Rover customers, when asked what they wanted from the new car, asked for no changes, only minor improvements. Which is a bit tricky really, especially when your outgoing product was the benchmark for luxury and ability, but there were a few things that needed fixing that blissfully have been. The rear, for example, is now big enough for actual humans. You can do away with the bench seat and have two captain's chairs fitted with a massage function. Mm. Land Rover has also listened to the complaints of having a cabin that's slightly uh, over-encumbered with buttons. Now, that's all gone. And has been replaced with a screen that does everything. Naturally, it comes with JLR's jazzy dual-view tech, which means when I'm hacking through the desert or up a mountain, and my passenger can be watching a DVD while I am paying attention to the sat-nav. The interior is an example of wonderful luxury, as it should be because the new Range Rover isn't cheap at all. It starts at a sniff over £71,000 and goes all the way up to over 120 if you want a V8 supercharged autobiography model like this one with lots and lots of toys. But for the extra money, you don't just get extra luxury, you also get some extra clever engineering. You see, the new Range Rover, despite being bigger in almost every dimension than its predecessor, weighs 420 kilos less. That's five adults, or around 30 of me. It manages that thanks to an all-aluminium construction. It's a trick Land Rover picked up from Jaguar, and a first for an SUV. This car's body shell weighs less than a BMW 3 Series, and that's quite smart. But what it means is that this car uses three quarters of the fuel of the last one. So essentially, it's nowhere near as thirsty a car of this size should be. But you're definitely asking in your head, is it still capable? Well, put it like this, throughout this entire film we've been playing around in the desert, but now we're headed to some mountains to talk about what it's like to be in the hot sea. The handling in this has been tweaked quite a lot, the weight loss helps, but also the algorithms for all the off-road kit has been adjusted as well. Higher spec models get adaptive suspension, so when you go into a corner, the car adapts to keep you nice and level. It's not a new thing for the class, but it's nice to see it's here. The Range Rover comes with the standard off-road tools, adjustable suspension, various traction modes, heated seats, a supercharged 510 brake horsepower V8, a support vehicle full of people who know what they're doing, and, uh... Well, that's it. Even on standard road tyres, this thing will go through the desert, on the road, then up a mountain, with no fuss at all. And that's what makes a Range Rover better than the Germans playing catch-up. And that's precisely what will make Bentley's attempt at an SUV sit wanting. The thing is, the Range Rover is the most capable car in the world. The last generation embarrassed pretty much everything on the road. Now this, the new, bigger, simpler to use, lighter version, well, it can take a Union flag and wave it in every other manufacturer's face. You may make a quiet saloon, but it can traverse a desert. Your sports cars may hit 62 miles an hour from rest in less than five seconds, but this one will do it in 5.4 while massaging its driver's bum and playing Finding Nemo for the kids. And yeah, they make SUVs too, but you know why they make SUVs? It's because the Range Rover was stealing sales from all of their other cars. To put it simply, it's because the Range Rover is the most versatile, capable and usable vehicle on the roads today.